Get out there and live life to the fullest. That's my motto. Never give up, really. That's one of the, um, the mottos of our karate club. Their last thing is never give up. I think that's the easiest thing. Um, and that's where your brain, your mind comes in. It's so easy to stop because things get hard, but if you push through that barrier, you can achieve so much. I don't kick, of course. Um, well, I do, but people just don't see it. It's that fast. As I say to people, you've never blocked one of my kicks. You never will. When people are doing kicks, I just carry on punching. So um, we might do 500 kicks and then 500 punches. So I end up doing 1,000 punches. We do patterns. So I try and get my wheelchair moving the same as someone would walk or move. You turn to the left, I turn to the left. You turn 360, I turn 360. We do have a form where there's a jumping kick, but I don't do that, do I? I do a wheelie, spin round, and I, I try and emulate what people are doing. So if they kick, I'll do a hand technique instead. Um, when I fight people, they've got the advantage that they only need to watch my hands, or if I'm using my wheelchair, just one hand, because my hands will drop. Up till the age of 10 years, 10 months, and two days, I run around. I was just like any other kid. Uh, we were on holiday in Scotland and my parents told my brother and I not to go near this cliff. So like uh, really good boys, we decided we'd try and climb it and unfortunately when I was on the way down, the cliff gave way. Ended up breaking my back and spending nine months in Stoke Mandeville Hospital. In those days, that was like the um, number one spinal unit in the world. And I was there for nine months and really feel that those nine months when I left, I was really well rehabilitated to uh, spend the rest of my life um, pushing myself around in a wheelchair. I came out from New Zealand, in, sorry, from England to New Zealand in 74 and uh, took up paraplegic sport over here. I'd been doing some in England and then in 76 started doing karate, found a club that would teach me and I've been doing karate ever since. Teaching people, I do a lot of talking to explain, so I'll tell you to have your feet shoulder width apart, weight 60% on the ball of your feet, things like that. Or I'll have people I call as my um, stand-ins, my leg dummies or whatever, and I'll get them to demonstrate a kick. Um, I think the, the buzz I get is just seeing the kids respond with me. We have about 20 kids sometimes training, and it's great, they forget I'm in a wheelchair, which is really good. And, Nice feedback, just watching them try, and um, it's, it's, it's just something, being able to empower people, give them that skill to do things. The biggest barrier is the person themselves. I've seen lots of cases where someone has been born with a disability, and as they've grown, they've learnt that there's support for them, and they, it's like a learnt dependency on people, and people are always running after them, helping them which is good, but sometimes they've, they've disempowered them by, by giving them too much help. Um, I think it's good to be there, but to help them, not to not do everything for them, but give them the skills to help themselves. Use your body to I can't think of there's anything I've wanted to do that I haven't been able to. I'll always find a way to do something. And that's a great thing. And it's having the confidence as well to ask. I know some disabled people, they sometimes don't want to ask and they will struggle. Whereas I think if I can give them a bill of skills, they will not struggle so much or have the confidence to ask. You know? And again, that's through my martial arts. It's given me that strength of mind. <laughs>